your energy forecast for Sunday, June 16th. Okay, so the moon is going to be in Libra energy all day. So again, we're trying to achieve balance and peace and harmony, not only within ourselves, but within the world around us, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. But as we know, the moon in Libra energy takes us on a little bit of an up and down adventure in order to find that balance, in order to find that sweet spot. We do tend to live in extremes before we're able to achieve that peace, that harmony, that balance between our heart and our head and between us and other people. This is also the last day that Mercury ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, and how it is that we express ourselves, is in his rulership in Gemini energy. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who happens to rule over the Libra and energy that the moon is in, also the last day of her being in this Gemini energy as well. Both our heart space, Venus, and our head space, Mercury, moving into Cancer energy here on the 17th within hours of one another. So there is going to be a heart and head alignment here. But as we approach the final degrees of Gemini energy, there's likely going to be an intensity, a crisis point, a pressurized system, not only on our heart space, but on our head space to wrap up the life lessons that we were supposed to learn while both of them move through this Gemini sector of our charts. So with all of that being said, there are nine different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. The sun in Gemini energy going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So we have some air on air action here. Gemini energy, immutable air sign, Aquarius, a fixed air sign. There's a lot of thinking. There's a lot of processing. There's a lot of choices, a lot of options. However, the sun shining a bright light on these options and Pluto helping us to kind of focus in and concentrate on the information, the details that is most important in order for us to arrive at what needs to change, not only within us, but within our physical realm, there's likely going to be an intensity on one option, one choice point, one direction over the other. Again, we are nearing the end of Gemini season and I've been saying since the beginning that we were not going to arrive at our choice point, at our decision point, at the path and direction that we want to choose, that we want to be walking until the final days of Gemini season season. And here we are, especially with Mercury and Venus wrapping up their time in Gemini energy, really pushing us into seeing that one option, one choice point, one decision is more favorable over the other, but definitely going to require major change, major transformation, not only between our heart and our head and our inner realm, but the actions, the patterns of behavior that we're displaying, that we're taking out in the external realm as well. The moon in Libra energy going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. So Venus rules over both the Libra energy and the Taurus energy that the moon and Uranus are in. The moon interacting with Uranus in this way is opening us up to seeing where it is that we have to kind of abandon doing the same old, same old and try something new. Seeing where it is in our physical realm that things are out of whack, where certain areas are crazy and chaotic, that is the area that needs our attention the most. We have to reel it in. We have to create order where there has been chaos. And because Uranus is the great awakener, giving us the opportunity to operate from the observer type of mentality, we are going to have a new perspective, a new aha moment, new information and details kind of flow in that will allow us to see 100% what it is that we need to be doing from here. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline. He's in this Pisces energy trying to deconstruct the old ways of doing things, the old ways of operating, the old ways of conducting ourselves, especially where building something new is concerned. Now, this is going to be a little bit harsh, a little bit of a reality check, a little bit of a negative Nancy, a little bit of a Debbie Downer. Why? Well, because the moon just had a very positive interaction with Uranus tipping the scales in an optimistic new perspective type of disposition. Again, because Libra and energy is so indecisive and so hard to kind of stay with one energy for very long, 
This is us, again, being tipped back in the not so nice direction. We have to do the cha-cha-cha in order to find the sweet spot, the compromise spot, the balance point in all of the decisions that we're currently being kind of faced with. The moon interacting with Saturn in this way is a heaviness, is a weight. It is putting us in a situation to see very clearly where it is that we're involved with certain situations and circumstances that are not promoting growth are not promoting freedom, are not promoting new change, new results. Therefore, the same old, same old is becoming very clear and a little bit frustrating. And that in turn should give us an option, an opportunity to see what it is that we could do differently. There is going to be a little bit of a restriction on our ability to sort through our thoughts and our emotions. Because again, Saturn kind of pumps the brakes on that particular amount of clarity in order for us to truly appreciate where it is that we've been and where it is now that we're contemplating on actually going from here. The moon is then going to make a awkward interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He literally represents the wisdom that we've learned through the tough love life lessons of our earthly experience. He's in this Gemini energy trying to push the boundaries of our mental plane, trying to expand on thoughts, on ideas, on options, on opportunities. The moon interacting with Jupiter is definitely going to tip the scales back in the favor of being a little bit more optimistic, a little bit more confident when it comes to considering some of the options and opportunities that we definitely want to try to pursue that we're just not feeling confident enough to actually take action upon. There is going to be a new aha moment that stems out of this particular teeter-totter, if you will, on where it is that we're actually excited and inspired when we give ourselves permission to not think it to death, to actually try something new, to advance in a new path, in a new direction, to tap into dreaming a bigger dream than what it is that we've been permitting ourselves to do as of recently. The moon is then going to sit across from directly oppose Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. And of course, the Aries energy and Libra energy, they sit across from each other in the Zodiac wheel. And so the moon being in Libra energy is kind of more concerned about what we could be or should be doing in order to make other people happy or smooth over certain relationship dynamics. While Chiron, on the other hand, is more concerned about what we need to be doing for ourselves, what we need to be doing in order to grow, to evolve, to heal, to repair our own damn self, our own identity, our own wants, needs, and desires. So this, of course, is not going to feel good and opposition never does. However, it is going to show us where it is that part of us is too concerned with the happiness, the well-being, if you will, of other people and where it is that we need to be more concerned about the happiness and the welfare of our own damn selves. Again, striking a balance is always key. The moon then goes ahead, and makes a very awkward interaction with Uranus. So earlier in the day, we had a positive interaction. Now this is not so favorable. This is actually putting us on the side of the scales that's confused, that's scared, that's afraid of trying something new. This has us on the set of scales where we're reverting back to the same old, same old, to what is tried, tested, true, and familiar, and abandoning the awareness, the aha moments that we had earlier on in the day. Let me just say this. There are certain epiphanies and pop-offs in your mental plane that once you know, you can't unknow. And as much as you want to try to ignore that particular piece of wisdom and awareness, it will essentially keep repeating itself until you choose to give it attention. This particular interaction definitely going to, again, put us on the not so nice side of the scales and really kind of clam up from the earlier excitement and inspiration that we had when we were interacting with Uranus in a much better way. The moon then makes a positive interaction with Saturn. So earlier on in the day, we had a negative interaction. That's what brought on the funk. That was the harsh reality check. That's what brought negative Nancy out to play. Well, this time around, the moon kind of interacting in a positive way is bossing us up. 
It's almost like we are overriding the fear program and we're understanding that we have been praying for change and change requires us to change our inner realm of emotion, of understanding. It's putting us in a situation to now see what it is that we want to build, what we want to create, what we want to bring to life. And therefore, we have to kind of focus on where we need to start kind of bringing forth new changes, new perspectives, new understandings in our emotional and mental realm. Because again, the change has to start within you before you're going to have the opportunity to actually engage the physical body, make moves, make changes in the physical realm. The moon is then going to trine the sun. This is a beautiful interaction. A trine is a gentle nudge in the right direction. It is a growth point. It is a healing point. The moon in this Libra energy, highly suggestive that we're reaching a common ground in our emotions. The sun is our life force energy, shining a bright light in this Gemini energy. Again, one choice point, one decision point, one path, one direction is more favorable now over the other. It's giving us good vibes. It's giving us certainty. It's giving us reassurance. It's giving us an opportunity to kind of create inspiration and excitement about the changes that we were fearful in actually making earlier on in the day. Any time that the moon and the sun come together in any kind of interaction, it brings a new level of emotional awareness to us, meaning we are clearly able to identify wants, needs, and desires that we weren't aware of in earlier aspects. So this is going to, again, give us new information, new details, new perspectives, new options, new opportunities that we actually feel good about. Now, the last thing that we have going on here today is Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, squaring, getting into the boxing ring with Neptune in his place of power in this Pisces energy. So I went on a little bit of a rant about these particular square offs in the Ascension forecast for this week. I would definitely recommend that you take a listen because I kind of lay out each and every single day this week and some of the major and minor aspects that are taking place. But especially where Venus, Mercury and the Sun are concerned, they are all coming to the ending phase of the Gemini energy, which means that they're all going to square off at that 29th degree with Neptune in the Pisces energy at 29 degrees. We talked about how this particular square does create tension and conflict because this is a growing pain, a growing point, if you will. But this is also going to intensify the confusion and delusion that we have had about our own wants, needs and desires, especially where our happiness, our joy, our safety, security and stability are concerned. Now, this is going to be the last aspect that Venus is going to make in this Gemini energy. She will be moving into the Cancer energy early Monday morning, June 17th. So this is like an opportunity for us to a tap into our intuition coming from Neptune and Pisces, which is going to help us out because we've been too intellectualized with Venus being in that Gemini energy for weeks. B, it is going to kind of, I'm going to say, create a sense of confusion over what we actually want what we actually need, what we actually desire. And it's definitely C, going to push us into the realm of wishful thinking and imagination and creative solutions because there's been a lot of, I'm going to say, Well, deception, there's going to be a lot of misinformation. There's been a lot of lies that got illuminated while Venus has been moving through the Gemini energy, trying to discern what is true, what is not, what is good, what is bad, what is for her and what is not. And so this is definitely going to create some tension because it's forcing us to kind of a deal with the reality of what it is that we actually have going on here in our physical realm, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned, and then b push us into imagining a better situation, circumstance and scenario. So we may get lost in la la land. We may get lost in realizing that our current reality is not what we want for ourselves. But again, all of this is kind of a self-reflection type of energy that we have an opportunity to kind of sit in and process Because once we move into that cancer energy, we step out of the intellect, we move into the emotional realm, we move into the intuitional realm as well. So this is going to kind of skew our perception on how it is that we're seeing ourselves, we're seeing our lives, we're seeing our relationship dynamics at this particular juncture. 
and open up the opportunity to identify what we don't really like, what we don't want to continue, so that when we do a deep dive in this cancer energy, we can get down to the nitty gritty of our feels and really get a grip on what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire, due to feeling what it is that we are being called to close the door on and called to do, called to pursue. Because again, Venus in this Gemini energy, we've just been intellectualizing what we think we should do, not necessarily what we feel we should do. So this is the, uh, the last aspect that we are going to have here today and the last aspect that Venus will be making in this Gemini energy. And it is definitely going to test our abilities to blend reality, what is, with magic, with what could be.